Beyond our community members, there are partners in the field who are absolutely crucial to the work of ZOA. Dr. Chiron Skinner is one of them. Formerly the Director of Policy Planning at the United States Department of State, Dr. Skinner is currently a professor at Carnegie Mellon University and a fellow at the prestigious Hoover Institute at Stanford University. Dr. Skinner has authored five books on Ronald Reagan and is a contributing writer on Forbes.com. Dr. Skinner's opinion essays have also appeared in Forbes.com, The National Review, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, and The Washington Post, among other publications. Dr. Skinner is being honored with the Dr. Bob Shulman Award for Outstanding Statesmanship for her outstanding diplomatic skills in furthering American interests on the international scene and for her outstanding success in issues surrounding NATO and ensuring that foreign powers pay their fair share in its support. And just as important for her extraordinary work in strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship and her commitment to expose the truth of the Arab-Islamist war against the State of Israel. Dr. Skinner has been a proud supporter of ZOA for so many years and has been with us so many times before. Dr. Skinner, I am proud to present you with the Dr. Bob Shulman Award. Receiving the Dr. Shulman Award for Outstanding Statesmanship is an exhilarating way to end the year. I thank the Zionist Organization of America and Dr. Shulman for this honor. I would like to speak with you this evening about peace in the Middle East and the fight against anti-Semitism. But first, let me thank our host, Mark Levinson. As chair of the National Board of ZOA, Levinson has contributed substantially to a greater worldwide understanding of Judaism. So too has Mort Klein, ZOA president. I thank these colleagues for their tireless work. Back in January, foreign policy elites in Washington joined the Palestinians in the view that the vision for peace, the Jared Kushner-led political plan to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict was dead on arrival. They said there was no way to settle decades-long sticking points in the region through one comprehensive agreement. Each sticking point indeed was and still is a formidable problem in its own right. Land for peace, Arab nationalism, terrorism, the whole notion of Israeli statehood, the right of return for the Palestinians, and the ongoing wars in the Middle East. Enter Donald Trump stopping endless wars, ending terrorism against Americans, and having our allies contribute their fair share to mutual defense are among the pillars of the president's foreign policy. This meant that the political problems of the Middle East, including the whole set of intractable Israel-Palestinian issues, had to be addressed. These three pillars of President Trump's foreign policy all came together in a positive way this year when the United States, Israel, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco signed onto the historic Abraham Accords. The six countries recognized that the way to achieve lasting peace and prosperity in the Middle East is through mutual understanding and coexistence, as well as respect for human dignity and freedom, including religious freedom. With the Abraham Accords, the Trump administration has answered the skeptics and the critics. Middle East expert John Hanna said the agreement could be the administration's first unqualified diplomatic success. Respected peace negotiator Dennis Ross has declared that at a partisan time, this is one issue that should be seen for what it is, an unexpectedly positive move. President Trump issued a tweet regarding the U.S.-Israel-UAE announcement, huge breakthrough. He also said the Abraham Accords mark the dawn of a new Middle East. Thomas Friedman of the New York Times agreed 
It's a geopolitical earthquake, he wrote. How was this historic agreement achieved? By turning on its head the established foreign policy analysis and strategies of global elites and doing so in a multilateral fashion. Derisively dubbed the Trump Doctrine, this bold reversal of our traditional diplomatic strategy is now the theory of the case premised on the belief that the new geopolitical realities demand new, if unconventional, regional partnerships, the Trump Doctrine has reordered the um, entire environment in the Middle East. The Trump administration has turned historic sticking points into historic turning points. As President Trump said, these arrangements prove that the nations of the region are breaking free from the failed approaches of the past. President Trump's policies have now made it a top priority for countries in the Middle East to normalize and strengthen ties with Israel and to form new arrangements. It took years of diplomacy to reach this breakthrough. The Abraham Accords are a victory for Israel, but they're also a major step forward for building a peaceful and prosperous future for the entire World Central Theater. In August, Senior Advisor to the President Kushner and National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien made history when they were on the first direct flight from Israel to the United Arab Emirates. Since then, di direct commercial flights between the two nations have been in high demand. It is a welcome sign that the Middle East is opening for business, tourism, and overall change. The Abraham Accords are the diplomatic fruit of this desire for change. They benefit the people of the Middle East, to be sure, but also the international community writ large. Freedom of movement brings the free flow of ideas. With help from the Trump administration, Israel, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Morocco, they are all leading the region toward more diversity. As the joint Israel UAE statement read, it's about forging people-to-people -people relations. Strong relationships among nations don't just end conflicts, but they prevent future wars. Ambassador David Freeman played a critical role in making all of this possible. I thank him on behalf of so many. I hope you don't mind if I add a personal note. I came to a love of Israel from my study of the Bible as a Catholic, as a Christian. Along with Muslims, we Christians and Jews are descendants of Abraham. We have a shared destiny, which means we have a shared responsibility. In my thinking then, there's another major problem on the horizon that we must all face. I'm referring to global anti-Semitism. That's a problem I took on as Director of the Office of Policy Planning at the State Department. It's also a problem that I've continued to address since leaving government. Like achieving peace in the Middle East, ending anti-Semitism is a trying problem of our time. I know it may seem too ambitious to say we must end anti-Semitism once and for all, but let me clearly state that we must end anti-Semitism once and for all. And furthermore, we African Americans have a special responsibility in this regard. Our Jewish brothers and sisters played a central role in advancing American civil rights in the 20th century. I would not be here today without the suffering they did alongside blacks who sat at lunch counters and marched in dangerous Jim Crow territory. They risked their lives for my freedom. Some of them died. So I am here tonight to return the favor, though it is much more. The Abraham Accords should be the new global formula for turning historic sticking points into historic, historic turning points. I ask humbly to join you in crafting an ironclad regime that irreparably weakens anti-Semitism in every corner of the globe through ZOA and other organizations committed to freedom, we can complete this project. Thank you, and God bless.